Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to make over this old antique dresser that I found in my local habitat. Um, if you saw my story, you know that I went to the habitat and I was looking at three different dressers and this was the one that I chose. The vision that I have for this dresser is I want to use the new IOD Lattice Rose Paint and Lay. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gather my materials so I'm prepared. I'm going to need chalk paintbrush, rollers, cloths. I'm going to need Amy Sloan chalk paint in old white, Arles in Tibby's green, and Barcelona orange. I'm going to need the Lattice Rose Paint and Lay by IOD, some scissors, Amy Sloan clear and dark wax, and Amy Sloan lacquer in matte. So next I'm going to prep my dresser so I can go ahead and paint it. I'm going to need to clean it really well, take the handles off, and I'm going to take the surface off the top of the dresser. The dressers are quality made and you can see that the dovetails were hand cut. However, they are a little wonky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some new slide guides because they are missing some and I'm going to attach them and then I'll get started with painting my dresser. So my dresser is all prepped and ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and apply my first layer of chalk paint. Now, if you want to get a nice smooth surface, you can either spray a little water on when you're brushing or with any Sloan, since it's pure chalk paint, you can give it a nice light sanding after it's painted and it really gives you a nice smooth surface. So I'm going ahead and give this dresser an entire first coat of chalk paint, let that dry and then add another one. I'm not painting the dressers drawers yet because I'm going to be doing that an entirely different color because the drawers is where I'm going to be adding the paint and lace. Okay, so now it's time to focus on the drawers where I'm going to be putting the IOD Lattice Rose paint inlay. I'm going to mix up some Annie Sloan to get the color Lem Lem because I didn't have any on hand. So I used some of the Old White, the Arles, and Antibes Green. And I mixed it up and I went ahead and put on my first layer on the drawers. After it dried, I realized it needed to be a little bit darker. So for the next coat, I added a little bit of the Barcelona orange and it came out to be the exact color that I was looking for. Um, if you saw my, my reel the other day, you saw it was with my dog. His name is Dodger and he posed in front of the finished dresser and his tennis ball exactly matched the color I was looking for. So it was very cute. Okay. So anyway, after um, I finally got the color that I wanted. Um, I decided it was time that I needed to figure out how I was going to lay the paint inlay on the drawers. Because the drawers were a little bit longer and required more than just one sheet of the paint inlay, I needed to figure out how I was going to apply it. So I laid it out and finally decided what I was going to do. And I was going to do the rose parts on the top drawer and then the rows with the outline on the bottom drawer and then take what was ever left over and have the meat in the middle on the middle drawer. And then I knew there would be like a one inch gap, but I decided that I would go ahead and just do it and see what happens. And then I would either put mold trimmings there or I would paint a stripe or I would figure out something. You don't always have to know where you're going. You just need to start. So that's what I did. I decided that once I took the paint and layoff later that I would decide what I would do there. All right, so I am going to go ahead and stir this up real quick. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a nice even layer on this drawer. Then I'm going to mist the back of the paint inlay. Misting the back of the paint inlay helps put the, on this carrier sheet or this the paint inlay on without it wrinkling, with less wrinkles. So once I put this on, I'm going to use a little bit of cellophane, and I just use this to kind of spread put it on very nicely, get out some of the wrinkles, and then I'm going to just mist it with a little bit of water and then do the same thing with the cellophane. I found that cellophane, just like with decoupage, it just smooths out some of the wrinkles and just without having to worry about if it's going to tear or not. So I'm going to go ahead and put on the top two and the bottom two. And you'll notice I have a little bit hanging off. So now I'm going to go ahead and take an X-Acto knife I'm going to cut it. So I'm going to cut both of these off and um, I'm going to put them on the middle drawer. Now you'll notice that <laughs> accidents do happen. What I did was on one of the sections, I accidentally put it on upside down. Now you're wondering, can you salvage 
a piece of paint inlay when you put it on upside down or on the wrong way, period. Well, you're going to see here in just a second. So I put it on and I noticed that when I was starting to rub that I was smearing. So I instantly knew I had it on the wrong side and I don't know how I did it, but I did it. Now we're going to go ahead, peel this off, apply it the correct way. And then we're going to see if you can save a paint inlay when you put it on the wrong way. And so stick around so you'll see what the outcome is. Honestly, at this point, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I hypothesized that it would be okay. So stick around and we're going to find that. So after the paint inlay has dried, um, this is my absolute favorite part. First, grab your mister bottle and you want to just lightly mist the entire section of your paint inlay. Make sure you get the edges because sometimes the, the edges will stick a little bit because you didn't get some the water on it to release it. So just make sure you get all the edges, all the corners, so it will release the paint inlay into the paint that you've just put on your surface or here, in this case, my drawers. So after it's sat for a little bit, I'm going to start peeling back. Wow, this has to be my most favorite part of doing this process, the reveal. Just look at that detail. Are they meant to be perfect? Absolutely not. Are they meant to look vintage and just like art? Absolutely. It comes the time where we need to see if this will work. This is the section that I put on upside down originally that I noticed I was smearing the paint of the paint inlay because I put it on wrong. I flipped it over and put the paint in lay on correctly. Let's reveal and see if it works. Whoa, look at that. It absolutely does work. So yes, you can put on an inlay upside down, pull it off while it's still wet, and then reapply it the right way. I'm going to let this dry for a second, and then we're going to go ahead and seal it. The way I'm going to seal this paint in lay today is I'm going to use some Annie Sloan lacquer in matte. I'm just going to take my foam roller and just give it a nice roll. You can see it just goes on smoothly and it does not affect the paint inlay and does not smear it. This is perfect for sealing your inlay. You always want to have this barrier, especially if you want to add some dark wax later. You want to have a barrier so you're not sm uh, smudging or smushing the paint inlay. The paint inlay definitely needs to be sealed. Now I need to decide what I'm going to do with this section because you can see where the two sections meet. There's about an inch gap and I need to decide, do I want to use some molds here? Do I want to paint a stripe? Do I want to blend some paint? Um, I've looked at it and I've decided that I think the mold will be too chunky for here and uh, I don't want to blend it. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a fun stripe. It's simple. It's easy. I'm going to add some blue painters tape. Then I'm going to use some of the uh, lacquer mat just to create a barrier between the tape and the drawer. So the um, color I choose, the white won't go underneath it and I'll get a nice crisp white line. After the lacquer dries, I'm going to just add two coats of the old white and remove the tape and then revealed will be a nice white line just to bring the two paint inlays together. Now that the paint inlays are sealed, I'm going to go ahead and seal the white part of the dresser. I give it a nice light sanding with a 220 grit just to make the surface nice and smooth. Then I'm going to apply the Annie Sloan clear wax. Then I'm going to put the drawers back in and I'm going to screw the handles back in, but I'm going to add a little bit of glue when I'm screwing the handles back in. That way I know they won't come out and they'll be in there for good. Um, because I'm using the dark wax with any Sloan, you always need to clear wax first. So then when you apply the dark wax, you can um, control it better. It doesn't bite into the porous surface of the chalk paint. Let's have some fun with the dark wax. The dark wax is one of the tricks that just adds that extra layer, extra depth to your piece. I'm going to definitely put it around the handles because the handles is what would be touched a lot, which would give it that more aged look and around the corners. So that's where I'm going to focus when I'm putting this on. I'm going to use my wax brush and I'm going to do some in the corners around the handles. And then I have a lint free rag where I'm just going to kind of blend in the edges. So that way it doesn't look 
choppy. It just makes it see it seamless, looks, makes it look a little bit nicer. I'm also going to use some of the wax in the corners on the sides of the, of the uh, dresser just to keep it consistent with the front with the aged look. Voila, it is all done. Let's take a look at the comparison of the before and then the after. What a huge difference. I highly encourage you to give the paint inlays by IOD a try. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but once you figure them out, they are beautiful and they will make your work unique, one of a kind, and set you apart from others. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the paint inlays, please feel free to reach out. They are available on my website, www.creatingwithshannon.com.